Bulginaka, do you know that cybercrime is becoming a growing problem in Fiji? Cybercrime is defined as a crime in which a computer is the object of the crime, such as hacking and spam. Cybercrime is also cyberbullying and using fake profiles to cause panic and spread false news. If you're involved in this or know anyone who's committing in this bulletin, avoid the pyramid schemes Fijians want. Cement companies issued prohibition notices. And multi-million dollar drug trial continues today. From the studios of FBC Suva. Fijians have been warned that pyramid schemes are illegal and anyone found organizing or participating in such schemes will be charged. Sanya Nimbola reports 20 pyramid schemes have been reported to the Consumer Council as of last week. The Ministry of Trade says people facing money problems should not turn to pyramid schemes running under the guise of a regifting program. Pyramid schemes or, or community gifting circles make virtually all the profits. Uh, from signing up new recruits and giving the illusion that, that it will allow you to make some high returns uh, on your investment. And they're not, uh, they're not only illegal, uh, it's actually a waste of money and actual time. Kwe adds those behind these illegal schemes should not prey on individuals who need quick cash because the scheme will eventually collapse and people will lose their hard-earned money. Such schemes will actually destroy knitted fabric of our society. A lot of people are convinced by, by such scams, but you know, they'll only start to complain when the, when the payback actually vanishes. There have been some people who have been actually approached by these scammers uh, and they are encouraging, convincing them to join this scheme. Uh, before you lose your money, try not to engage in such illegal activities. The ministry is urging all Fijians to be careful with such quick cash deals and call the Consumer Council on 155 for more queries. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Prohibition notices have been issued to Tangi Cement and Pacific Cement Limited by the Environment Ministry. Permanent Secretary for Environment Joshua Whitecliffe says concerns were raised by the Lamy residents about the two cement companies failing to comply with environmental requirements. Whitecliffe says the suspected issue is that the dust being emitted from the factories does not meet the standards. We have our own surveillance teams that notice some emissions. We send specific surveillance teams to go in and have a look. Um, they came back, they did two surveillance rounds and they came back with um, uh, reports that said there were some emissions. The two companies in the previous years have been issued notices for various reasons. The Public Accounts Committee has found numerous issues in the audit of government ministries and departments for 2016. Committee Chair Alvaric Maharaj tabled in Parliament about 20 recommendations to improve financial reporting records, keeping and use of taxpayers' funds. He also revealed an error and omission in cash at bank balance of $6.7 million. The Public Accounts Committee has noted that proper book of records were not kept for some trust fund accounts, while others were operated without documents. The committee has raised concerns about a consolidated $26.7 million in trust accounts not being supported with detailed listing of claimants or themnies. Ministries and departments did not always provide relevant supporting documents such as payment vouchers, acquittals and agreements to support the expenditure. A team from the Criminal Investigations Department, officers from the Fiji Detector Dog Unit and Joshua Aziz Raman were all present during the initial drug raid. This was revealed in court during the multi-million dollar drug trial against Raman yesterday afternoon. The Canadian national has been in custody for two years now and faces one count of unlawful possession of illicit drugs. Yesterday, the prosecution produced two more witnesses who were the dog handlers present during the drug raid and Brahmin's residence in Dombati. The first witness, Inspector Manueli Yawayawa, informed the court that the Fiji Detector Dog Unit has received a call instructing them of a drug raid on the 14th of February 2019. He says two canines were deployed and the canine he was handling found the drug in the bedroom on the top floor of a double-story building. While the second witness started to give evidence, a power surge was experienced and Judge Justice Daniel Gounder had adjourned the case to today. The trial will continue in the High Court. 
Close to $3 million will be spent in dredging the Mbar River to prevent flooding. Waterways Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says during, during, the excessive, during the torrential rain, excessive water that comes downstream is discharged in a short period of time, leading to flooding. He says the company has been given a contract to, to dredge 5 kilometers downstream and 4 kilometers upstream of the Mbar River. But town and other flood-prone areas suffered widespread flooding during tropical cyclone Anna. We are engaging a, a number of contracts with the private sector where, in partnership, they will undertake the dredging and then they will pay the royalty, take the silk material, sell it and make money. ANZ will extend its fee waiver until September for online foreign currency payments made from Australia and New Zealand into 10 Pacific countries. The bank says the latest figures show the value and volume of transfers made by ANZ customers to the Pacific has increased substantially on the same period last year. In February, ANZ Australia and New Zealand customers sent a combined volume of 8,761 international money transfers worth 12 million Australian dollars. ANZ Regional Executive Pacific Tesla Price says the move will provide some relief for ANZ customers during a difficult period. Up ahead, the year returns to seventh circuit after more than a decade. And Nandronga team improves after every game. Bulere, we have Samuel Samuel. Nama kiki rau ena be mataka. Moni tiki na mukarumbuka. Ni wai tiki kali mana mini tiki ono kina tiki na kaloko. Ena radio Fiji one nando mo ibiti. Kina kina na mataka. Dandra mana singa mo. Another local football rep is making is taking his chances rather in making a name for himself in seventh rugby. Former Real rep, uh, former Real football rep Epeli Valivo is exploring his options after being suspended from all levels of football last season. The 20-year-old will play his first national level rugby match on Thursday. Uh, expecting a very large crowd since uh, Fiji is uh, known for this sport around the world and yeah, just hoping to do my best. Making the switch from a football to rugby was a challenging one for the Kandavu lad. Training it's a bit different than soccer, where it's uh, soccer there are lots of running, but in rugby it's more physical and. Uh -uh. Valevo is part of the 12 member Dilia 7th team, which is playing after a lapse of over 15 years. We are returning to the Mari 7th after such a long time. Dilia was known to be one of the top 10 teams in the country when it was called BP Series. The aim of the team is to expose the players to top level rugby during the Mari 7th tournament. This is part of their development plan to become one of the best in the country. Defense is a worry for the defending Marist under-21 champion, the Dominion Brothers. This is an area of weakness for the team, which has been evident in the past tournaments. Manager Epeli Matata says they will need to brush up on this before game day. Uh, well, this is seven, so one-on-one uh, -on -one tackle is a must, yeah, because uh, we can't afford to be missing any tackles with regards to uh, defending the champion. So, uh, yeah, one-on-one -on -one tackle is a must, and... Uh, uh, competing on the rock as well. The Fiji Rugby Union remains optimistic in its bid to have the Fiji Ndrua team in the Super Rugby competition. For the Ndrua to drain, FRU will need to raise $1.40 million by the end of this month to keep its Super Rugby dream alive. Chief Executive John O'Connor says negotiation is still underway and there has been growing interest from a lot of private investors. A few uh, that we are currently discussing too, but uh, nothing... Uh, uh, concrete at the moment. Eh? It's uh, ongoing discussions and negotiations, but uh, we're positive and we're working hard to make sure that we um, we get we meet the requirements that are set by New Zealand rugby. Nandronga football coach Ramesh Sharma believes the team has improved drastically. Sharma says the match against Mba on Sunday showed the team's true potential. The lone goal in the match was uh, through a penalty.
I think there's a lot of improvement shown, especially as I said, a top team like Bar. We have played Bar after five years, and uh, it's not easy to play Bar, whether it's at home or whether it's in Bar. Uh, it's a uh, well known team with a lot of uh, top players. The trough of low pressure will continue to affect the country today. There will be occasional showers and isolated thunderstorms over most places. Isolated heavy falls may lead to flash flooding of low-lying areas. That's FBC Morning News. Join us at 7 p.m. for Major Bulletin. For news you can trust, get the facts from FBC's TV, radio and digital news at fbcnews.com.fj. Take care and good morning. हमारे खूबसूरत देश बीजी में चाइल्ड अब्यूज की घटनाएं आए दिन बढ़ रही हैं। क्यों बच्चों का मासूम बचपन अब्यूज का शिकार हो जाता है अपने बच्चों की सुरक्षा का खास ख्याल रखें। उनसे बातचीत करें उनके दोस्तों के बारे में जानें। आज के बच्चे देश का भविष्य है मैं दीप्ति और मैं मोनिश आपके हम सफर शामिल हो जाए हमारे साथ मंडे टू फ्राइडे फाइव फोर्टी फाइव तक रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन आरोप